exercise is overrated if you're trying to lose weight. So if you want to lose weight fast, but you hate the idea of working out and exercise, then you're in the right place. Because today I'm going to introduce you to seven proven strategies that work better, that work faster, and that are a heck of a lot easier than exercise for weight loss. And if you're serious about losing weight, I think you're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because strategy number seven might just be the most effective. Before we get into it, let me quickly introduce myself in case you don't know who I am and you're wondering why you should listen to me. My name's Dargan. I've been a certified personal trainer and nutritionist for nearly six years now. And in that time, I've helped well over a hundred guys and girls to achieve amazing results that look like this, 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 and this. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that exercise is bad because it's not. Everyone knows the physical and mental benefits of exercise. And I truly believe that there is a type of exercise out there for everybody. But I'm also very aware that just the mere idea, the sheer thought of exercise is one of the biggest mental barriers that puts people off even thinking about starting to lose weight. And I also know that if we're purely talking about weight loss, then exercise isn't even an essential part of the process. So what is? The first of the seven strategies that I've got for you today isn't so much a suggestion, but more a requirement if you want to lose weight. And that is creating what we call a calorie deficit. Because you can pick any diet you want. You can even pick a combination of diet. You can fast. You could eat one big meal or five small ones. You could only eat on odd hours in the morning or at night. And you can take all the supplements in the world. But if you're not in a calorie deficit, you're not losing weight. A calorie deficit is where you are eating less than what we call your maintenance calories. And your maintenance calories is, well, exactly what it sounds like. The number of calories you need to maintain your current weight and body fat percentage. If you create a daily 500 calorie deficit, which you could do by eating 500 calories less or burning 500 calories more or doing a bit of both, and then rinse and repeat that for one week, you will lose one pound of fat, which is this much, by the way. And that's because there are 3,500 calories in one of these, in one pound of fat. 500 times seven, seven days in a week, equals 3,500. If you want my help, calculate your own personal calorie target and how much protein you should be having so that you can have total peace of mind that you're eating the right amount and reach your goal faster, then click the first link in the description of this video and I'll send you my personal recommendations for you and explain all the numbers in full detail. Quick suggestion when it comes to setting your calorie target. Rather than a to create a 500 calorie deficit every single day. Multiply your calorie target. So your maintenance number minus 500 would be your daily target, but then multiply that number by seven. So a very quick working example, let's say my maintenance calorie number is 2,500. To create that 500 calorie deficit, I'm going to subtract 500. So my daily calorie target would be 2,000. But rather than trying to hit 2,000 calories every single day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on repeat, every week, look, what I'm going to do is multiply that number, that 2,000 by seven. That's now going to give you a weekly calorie allowance because trying to eat the exact same amount every single day is next to impossible. You're a human being, not a robot. There's a lot in your life that's out of your control. Every day is different and most days are pretty unpredictable. You can make the best plan in the world, but stuff's always going to go wrong. Work, family, kids, traffic, sickness. And if you fail one day, you're going to be tempted to give up the rest of the week and start again on Monday. But that's the mentality we want to avoid. Giving yourself a weekly calorie allowance puts you in the driver's seat. It gives you a lot more control and a lot more freedom. It means you can plan your week proactively, having lower calorie days when it's easier and high calorie days when you want to go out for dinner or have drinks or when you're just a bit more stressed out and you need something to take the edge off because we've all been there. Strategy number two is to focus on the quantity quality and regularity of your sleep. And this is for five reasons. Getting enough sleep and getting enough good quality sleep helps to regulate your hormones. Adequate high quality sleep helps to balance your hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Ghrelin is in charge for how hungry you feel and leptin is in charge of how full you feel. If you're well slept, your leptin is going to be nice and high and your ghrelin is going to be nice and low. In other words, you're going to feel full and you're not going to feel so hungry. And that's important when you're trying to lose weight because we want to make this process as easy as possible. So getting adequate sleep, both in terms of quantity and quality, 
It's going to reduce your cravings and that is going to prevent you from overeating. Reason number two is that quality sleep boosts your metabolism and that makes it easier for your body to burn calories efficiently. Reason number three is that good quality sleep helps to reduce your stress levels. Your stress hormone is called cortisol. Now cortisol on its own isn't a bad thing. It actually keeps us alive. But if we have a bad night's sleep or dare I say it, we are chronically underslept, your cortisol is going to be elevated to unhealthy levels. And if your stress level is high, and I'm sure you've experienced this, you're not thinking about your diet or your weight loss. You're just trying to get through the day. In other words, when you're stressed out, it's a lot easier to justify poor decisions to yourself, including bad decisions around your food. Reason number four is that better sleep improves your insulin sensitivity, and that reduces the risk of your body storing excess fat. And reason number five is probably the most obvious one. Restorative sleep improves your energy levels. More important than energy, though, good sleep gives you more drive. You want to get up to go out and to do stuff. Moving on, everyone knows that water is good for them and everyone knows that they should probably be drinking more of it. And that's exactly what strategy number three is all about. However, despite knowing these two things, a lot of people struggle with their water intake. And if you're watching and you're thinking, I'm one of those people, Doug, then despite all the excuses you might have told yourself, it's just because you're not focused on it. But that's not your fault. You're not focused on it because although you've heard water is good for you, no one has actually taken the time to explain why it's so good for you and just how impactful it can be on your health in a positive way. But water can actually help you to lose weight in five ways. Number one is that it prevents dehydration. People don't realize how sensitive our brains are to dehydration. If your brain senses that your body is just one to two percent dehydrated, well, your brain is a very finely tuned control center and it will very purposefully start to switch off non-essential processes in your body. What that looks looks like in reality is you feeling lethargic and if you feel lethargic you feel lazy and if you feel lazy you're far less likely to get up and to do stuff and if you're not doing as much you're not going to be burning as many calories making weight loss harder. Reason number two is that like sleep, drinking enough water, particularly cold water, actually boosts your metabolism. And that's because drinking cold water activates a process called thermogenesis, where your body has to use calories to heat up that water. Reason number three is that drinking a lot of water suppresses your appetite. And it does this because not only does it physically fill your stomach, but it also expands the walls of your stomach. And that sends a signal to your brain that you are full. So it's a neat little trick that you can play on your brain. Reason number four is that it's zero calories. So it acts as a great alternative to sugary beverages, coffees from your local coffee house, or even alcohol, all of which do contain calories. And if you're sat there thinking, yeah, but Doug, drinking water all the time is very boring. Or if you're one of those weirdos who's not even from planet Earth and says that they don't like the taste of water, there are plenty of delicious zero sugar squashes available for you to choose from. And the fifth way that water helps you to lose weight is through a process called lipolysis. Proper hydration is necessary for the oxidation and breakdown of fat molecules. That process is called lipolysis. Dehydration, on the other hand, can hinder that process of breaking down the fat cells. Strategy number four is to get more steps in. People underestimate the amazing effect that walking can have on their overall health and their weight loss. But I've got clients who've lost 30 pounds in just three months, and that was largely from walking. Walking 10,000 steps a day might sound like a lot, but when you realize that's only gonna take you 60 to 90 minutes, and it's gonna help you burn anything from 300 to 500 calories, depending on how much you weigh and how fast you're walking, it helps to reframe it. And it takes it from being a chore, something you don't wanna do, to something you can really get behind and even get excited about. But more importantly, it's sustainable, because it's easy, because it's free, because it doesn't hurt, because it's not gonna burn you out, and because you can multi task whilst you do it. Whether that's getting your kids outside to burn off the extra energy they've always got, listening to a podcast, an audiobook, or a new playlist, or even taking walking meetings. Not only that, but walking regularly improves your cardiovascular health and your overall stamina. But my favorite benefit of walking every day is the mental one. Walking activates a part of your nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's the part of your nervous system that's directly linked to rest, relaxation, and restoration. In other words, walking has been scientifically proven to reduce your stress levels. The fresh air, the daylight, seeing, speaking to other people, feeling part of the community, all of that good stuff releases endorphins. Endorphins that have the power to reduce your cortisol, that stress hormone we talked about. And remember, if you're less stressed, you're more likely to make good decisions about your food 
and less likely to overeat. Let's move on and talk about strategy number five. The number of calories that we burn at rest doing nothing is called our BMR, which stands for basal metabolic rate. A simple way of thinking about it is that it's the number of calories that your body needs to keep you alive, to make sure that vital organs like your lungs, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, and others can function well. We burn more calories on top whenever we do something metabolic, which is anything that raises our heart rate. One, or should I say two, very good ways to elevate your heart rate quickly is to take your body out of its comfort zone. And that's exactly what strategy number five does, because we're going to be talking about cold and heat exposure, or more specifically, cold showers, ice baths, steam rooms, and saunas. When your body experiences extreme temperatures, it has to work two, if not three times as hard to regulate everything and keep you alive. That makes these things, cold showers, ice baths, steam rooms, and saunas, very metabolic. So you're going to burn a lot of calories in a short amount of time. Are they uncomfortable? Yes, they're supposed to be. And the good news is, is that they all come with added benefits. Exposure to cold activates brown fat, which specifically burns calories to generate heat. And like I said, anything that burns more calories is going to help with weight loss. Both cold and hot exposure boost your metabolic rate as your body has to work harder to maintain its core temperature. Cold exposure has also been proven to reduce inflammation and improve recovery. While heat exposure from steam rooms and saunas helps to relax your muscles, detoxify your body, and even promote relaxation and stress relief. And last but certainly not least, regular exposure to both hot and cold can improve insulin sensitivity, which reduces fat storage and promotes weight loss. I think a lot of you are going to like strategy number six, because I know a lot of you are addicted to this stuff, and that is to drink more coffee, specifically black coffee, because there's a lot of rubbish in these energy drinks, and there's actually a lot of calories in these coffee house drinks. The reason that I'm encouraging you to drink Drink more black coffee if you want to lose weight without exercising is fivefold. First and foremost, caffeine will increase your metabolic rate. And as I've said a couple of times now, anything that boosts your metabolic rate helps your body to burn more calories because it raises your heart rate even when you're at rest. Reason number two is that caffeine enhances your physical performance. That's going to make you more active and the more active you are, the more calories you're going to burn. The more calories you burn, the easier weight loss becomes. Reason number three is that caffeine can act as an appetite suppressor. Reason number four is that caffeine actually stimulates the breakdown of fat cells. This process is called fat oxidation, and it makes your fat available for energy use. And reason number five is probably the most obvious one, but still worth covering because it's important. And that is that caffeine enhances your energy levels and your focus, making it more likely that you'll make better decisions. Caveat though, make sure you stop drinking caffeine by 1 p.m. Because depending on the dosage, the intensity of your caffeine hit, it has what we call a half-life of six to eight hours. This is the amount of time that it takes for half of the caffeine to leave your system. So if you're drinking caffeine later in the day, it's going to negatively impact your sleep. It's going to go directly against strategy number two, which we talked about focusing on your sleep. And we don't want that, do we? If you're still with me, then well done. Because like I said right at the start of this video, the seventh and final strategy may be just the most effective of them all. It's so simple that when you get it, you'll get it. And that is to just do more stuff. Remember earlier when I was explaining that you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight and that you can create that deficit by eating less than your maintenance calories or increasing your maintenance by burning more calories. The latter is what this strategy is all about, creating a more active lifestyle. So whether it's cleaning your house, doing some gardening, taking your kids out to play, get a dog and walk it twice a day, take the stairs or walk up the escalator, or my personal favorite, have more sex with your partner. Doing any of these things in isolation isn't going to make that much of a difference. But consciously making an effort to lead a more active lifestyle, stacking these healthy habits over time, is going to add up over the days, weeks, and months to make a huge difference in terms of the number of calories that you're burning. So you see there's plenty of ways that you can lose weight fast without having to go to the gym and lift weights or go for a run. But having said everything that I've just said, I would be remiss, I would be awful at my job if I didn't encourage you to try some exercise, even if you hate it. Because as I said, I think in the first 10 seconds of this video, I am utterly convinced that there is a type of exercise out there for everyone. If you hate exercise, it's probably based on your past experiences with it. And I get that, it can be traumatic, but it doesn't mean you should just give up on everything because there are so many benefits, both physical and mental to exercise. Anyway, I'll save all of that for another video. If you're still with me, I really appreciate you watching the video to the end. I hope you've enjoyed it, but more importantly, I hope you found it useful. And if you wanna show your support for me and the channel, then I would be so grateful if you could smash the thumbs up button to like the video, 
drop a comment. Let me know which of the seven strategies you like the sound of the most. Don't forget to use the calorie calculator if you want my help calculating your personalized calorie recommendations so that you've got the peace of mind and can reach your goals faster. And of course, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the next video. I've got some bangers coming up that you're not going to want to miss. Until next time, bye.